Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Yomesh Gupta. In this video, we are going to quickly talk about how to identify uncompressed JS and CSS assets in a web app. Now, this topic like compression, performance optimization, web performance comes a lot in front-end interviews and specifically, let's say, front-end system design where people uh, talk about compression and throw other jargons, but they mostly have very theoretical knowledge about this. Uh, it could be maybe they are early in their career or never got a chance to work on things like that. So in this video, we are going to quickly talk about it that how when we have to debug a web app, then uh, or when we have to debug something, then how we can use uh, tricks in the browser to quickly identify the uncompressed assets. Also, we'll see before and after that what uh, compression plays role and what is the difference in size. And uh, we'll also see a live uh, demo of uh, all these things like it's not going to be theoretical we'll see how we can apply this knowledge so without wasting any time let's get started before we go into the actual code part and the demo part there is something which we need to understand this is the base fundamental of this topic that what is resource size and what how it's different from the transfer size when we do something like npm run build we generate some assets and those are written on the disk now, the what's written on the disk, that actual file, the size of that file is the resource size. Uh, it could be, let's say, 100 KB, 200 KB, 600 KB, 500, whatnot. Okay, but that's the actual size of the file on our disk or on the server, basically. Now, the transfer size is the number of bytes that is transferred from server to client. Now, server here is an umbrella term. It could be CDN, it could be or origin server or whatnot. But the idea is that the data that is transferred from server to client, the number of bytes, that is the transfer size. Now the transfer size could be equal to or less than the resource size. Uh, so now why it's equal or less than, let's say compression is applied, then in that case it would be less than the resource size most likely and if there is no compression then it would be similar. So if we have the resource size of 100 KB, and there is no compression then it would be 100 KB and if there is a compression like gzip broadly or something else then it could be 10 KB or less than 10 KB 1 KB or something like that. So let's take a look at this with an example. So let's say I go to devtools.tech and uh, here right now we have selected uh, JS uh, it's on port G and we have disabled the cache. Now if you see that all the JS files are listed here, I've sorted them by size, we can see that there are two numbers mentioned here. One is 207 KB and another is 16, uh, 617 KB. Now why the two numbers? This directly ties up to the information that uh, we just discussed. That 207 KB is the transfer size and 617 KB is the resource size. The difference is here because this particular JS bundle is compressed and we have, if we go to the headers here, we'll see that content encoding gzip. So that means the gzip is applied on this and over the wire we have received less data and when we do this, then the benefit is that we are getting the less data and it means uh, faster calls and uh, faster loading of the uh, website. So now let's uh, take a look at an example and see how we can use the browser to find out the uncompressed files. So let's, I have a server running at local host 3000 and if you see that all the files are loading here and once they are loaded then we see some dummy content on the page. Now if I shortlist or if I you know sort the uh, files by size then we can see that there are these bunch of files where there, the size is 690 in the transfer size and 690 in the resource size. So that means there is no compression here as such because resource size and transfer size is same. However, there could be some files like here the transfer size is 0.4 KB and uh, resource size is 75 KB. So that means there is a compression applied and this took just 1.91 seconds and this one took 3 seconds and if you scroll down some took, uh, uh, some took 5 seconds and so on. Now imagine you are uh, working on a project or you got some bug where or you want to optimize a web app and there are n number of uh, files there. There could be first party files, third party files and all that. And you have to quickly identify which ones are uncompressed. So that is we will we are using the process of elimination. We'll see if the files are compressed and compressed or if there is some other problem with the files. So how can we do this? So in the network tab, I select this cog on the top right. I select big request rows because that will give me more information. I have already done that. 
uh, we have disabled the cache I have changed it to pass 4G you can keep it as anything I just want to give it a demo that's why now we can uh, we want to apply this filter on XHR request doc CSS and JS you can even skip uh, CSS oh, sorry doc or S XHR but because our primary concern is CSS and JS files we are not selecting images because uh, compression doesn't the, these compressions easy broadly they don't apply to images from the dev from the dev tools dot tech example we know that uh, that if a file is compressed then there is a header content encoding on it so we'll apply a filter has response header content encoding now as soon as we apply this filter here it will give me all the files where this header is present so on our document we have compressed it on our uh, all the js files the medium ones and on the small ones it is applied that's why we can see that the resource size was 102 kb but the transfer size is 0 0.4 kb but our idea here is to find all the files where it is not applied so what we are going to do is that we are going to check mark this invert as soon as we do that it will give me all the files where uh, the transfer that header is not present and it is very straightforward it just took us less than 10 seconds to actually set it up now but the idea here is uh, powerful that let's say you're sending some customs uh, header on the server from the server but you want to find out that if it it is getting applied to all the files or not so you can just come here and apply that filter maybe uh, you uh, you want to see if the cache control header is present or not or something else i'm talking specifically about headers but you can apply different filters here so by doing this we got a uh, idea that all these files where big five four three and all that there is no uh, con uh, this content encoding so there is no compression header present and now we can dig deep into individual file maybe there is so we'll get the information about path we'll get information about other headers and that we can use in an entry point to debug now we here since this is an example we got a sense that every file where big is present it's not compressed so we'll go back to our code we'll see that how it is set up that inside our express app we are using this middleware compression that is compressing the actual files and if the url contains big then we are skipping the compression so we don't want that let me just comment this out i'll just use uh, app.use we'll pass this compression that means we are not doing any filtering here if any asset that uh, we uh, we want to serve will compress it now I'll just restart my server. I'll go back and uh, if I open it in a new tab, localhost 3000, you will see it's loaded right away and the same uh, configuration is set up because has response header and co content encoding filter is present and we have inverted it. That and there is no data here now because all the files are now compressed. So if I remove this, then we'll start seeing everything. And you can see that the big, uh, if I, you know, you can see that the big ones, they are 307 KB earlier, it was 307 KB. And now uh, the, the resource size is 307 KB and the transfer size was also 307 KB. But now it is just 0 0.4 and it's loaded in 62 milliseconds. And earlier, if we go here, the big dot 34 was 307 KB both and it it took 5 seconds so from 5 seconds we brought down to 0 0.4 uh, 62 milliseconds obviously this is local host so take it with a grain of salt you can deploy and test it out but the crux here is that you know using the browser the browser dev tools are so powerful that you can use uh, different configurations here different filtering and uh, you can find out uh, what are compressed and uncompressed resources and that will give you a good starting point to debug so this is the end of the video I hope you were able to learn something new today. Uh, the idea here was to uh, quickly give you a brief glance about resource size, transfer size and how we can use uh, Chrome DevTools to filter out uncompressed files and how it can give us a quick uh, starting point to further debug the problems and what is the dip, uh, difference in before and after in the compressed, uh, compressed files. Uh, as always if you see value in this content uh, or if you see that I missed out something or could have done better then please do mention in the comments happy to talk about it 
uh, there are links on the screen devtools.tech slash pricing you can go and subscribe to the platform uh, it will give you all the tools that you need to excel in front end interviews uh, if you like the video then please do like share and subscribe do share it on your social platforms on linkedin twitter tag me happy to retweet or repost that uh, do connect with me um, if you have any questions then feel free to reach out uh, till next time see you take care bye bye